Hello, I'm James Ben from McMaster University. I research religion in medieval China, and I'm part of the Shirk-funded project From the Ground Up, which aims to uncover important new source materials for the study of East Asian religions. One important type of material that this project explores is a body of literature that we often refer to as Chinese or East Asian Buddhist Apocrypha. Now, what do we mean by the term Buddhist Apocrypha? Why is this material significant? How do we study it? I use a fairly simple working definition of an apocryphal Buddhist scripture. It's a text that claims to be a translation from an Indian work that records the words of the Buddha, but that was in fact composed in literary Chinese, so not necessarily composed by Chinese people or on Chinese soil. Standards for assessing the authenticity of Buddhist sutras already existed in Indian Buddhism. But once texts were translated out of Indic languages, those standards could not be applied in China or elsewhere in East Asia. Compilers of catalogues of Buddhist scriptures in China try to separate out indigenous compositions and not allow them to circulate further. Their careful efforts went some way to policing the boundaries of the Buddhist canon in China by weeding out those scriptures that catalogers labelled as spurious or false. But their success in doing so creates challenges for researchers who want to understand what exactly pre-modern Buddhists in East Asia were reading. A good deal of this literature has disappeared from our view. From manuscripts preserved at an important Buddhist site called Dunhuang, we know that many Buddhist scriptures, later excluded from the canon, circulated as authentic sutras. Other doubtful and apocryphal works made their way to Japan, and these manuscripts, preserved in Buddhist temples, provide valuable records of what Buddhists in medieval East Asia actually read. Of course, the scriptures that we have discovered so far represent only a small part of the Chinese Buddhist apocrypha produced in medieval times. Most of those works are gone for good, but we can get some sense of the ideas and practices that were in circulation. Some scriptures make a creative and novel synthesis from Buddhist and traditional Chinese elements. For example, by making connections between the five precepts of Buddhist lay people and the Chinese five elements and five directions. Some apocryphal scriptures engage with Taoist claims that Lao Tzu was actually the inventor of the Buddhist tradition. We even see claims that Confucius and Lao Tzu were in fact disciples of the Buddha. Apocryphal scriptures sometimes amplify and dramatize the Buddhist tradition about the inevitable decline of the Buddha's teachings. They describe in detail the imminent calamities that await the faithful and offer specific remedies to avoid them. Related to the apocalyptic themes found in some Buddhist apocrypha are scriptures which promise the imminent arrival of a Buddhist saviour. We learn that Maitreya, the next Buddha to come, but not due for many long eons according to canonical literature, is soon to descend, assisted by two bodhisattvas. Some of these important messianic texts no longer survive, and we know them only by their titles or through brief and tantalizing quotations. Some apocrypha offer much information on popular practices, such as the perennial concerns of divination and healing. But we should not imagine that popular apocrypha involved a dilution of the messages found in translated Buddhist literature. Some apocryphal scriptures were fundamental in reinforcing morality and disciplinary standards through the promotion of bodhisattva precepts rules of Buddhist behavior to be observed by clergy and laity alike. Although catalogers and scholars often see translated sutras and apocryphal works under separate headings, they continue to exist in symbiosis. For this project, Chinese Buddhist apocrypha are important in a number of ways. For our researchers, these texts represent in concrete ways new ideas moving across places in East Asia. They help us to understand how religion was practiced on the ground. Our project will help us better understand how these texts were made and employed. We aim not only to find new examples of apocryphal scriptures in China, Korea and Japan, but also to understand how they were used. For example, were apocryphal texts regularly placed within images? Were they carved on stone? Were they both printed and copied out as manuscripts? Thanks for watching this brief video about Chinese Buddhist apocrypha for the Shirk sponsored project From the Ground Up Buddhism and East Asian Religions. I hope you enjoyed it. Please explore other videos produced by our research team.